This episode of the Dub Wirecast is sponsored by Buy My Fucking Album. So, buy my fucking album. www.xp.uk. Nice one. Hello, my name's XP. I'm a hip-hop MC, producer, engineer, and general musician based in Leeds, West Yorkshire. Those that know me know I have a lot of time for West Yorkshire-based musicians, and since my days running and hosting the WY Cypher, I've tried to always champion the local community while also maintaining my rapper arrogance that everyone but me is whack and they should all quit, but also maintaining my non-existent self-esteem that I'm actually the wackest around and I should quit. One thing that always reminds me that it's just sick to make music and be a part of Dub Y is talking to other musicians, but in person and not on social media. After convincing myself podcasts are a waste of valuable music listening time, I decided to do one anyway, as at least this way you're listening to good musicians based in or affiliated with the West Yorkshire hip hop scene. And I'll be expanding that out to soul and jazz musicians as well over time. I'll be talking to people I know and hopefully those I don't as well to speak to them about their music and their association with Dub Y West Yorkshire. And just a side thing, I'm going to be constantly saying Dub Y, W Y, West Yorkshire, and interchanging them. So just get over it. And on this episode, we've got the main man, Precinct Phantom, a prolific with a capital fucking P for prolific. Uh, rapper, far too many tracks. Uh, you just can't keep up with the motherfucker. He just keeps making music and working with as many people as he can. And he's sick. He does a really good job. I actually record him at my studio a lot. Uh, he comes through and uh, we I mix and record him. So yeah, a guy I know pretty well. And yeah, we just have a cool ass conversation. I really like this one, man. Oh, I also have a really shitty cold. So you, if I have a laugh and I'm asthmatic, it sounds fucking awful. So enjoy. Pretty fucking phantom. Finally, got you, bro. We're here. I feel like we booked it in a couple of times. Did we book it in once and then got rained off or some shit? Or did I just never get around to it? Or it was just whether you were in the Dubai or whatever, but. I think I was longing it out, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, I'm here. We made it. Nice. Legend, man. Fucking, it's it's an honor to have you on and be chilling in Moonwood Park with you. And fucking, yeah, I, I spoke, in, spoke in detail uh, about you already on Chills Miss podcast because you guys like been working together for time. Um, I, 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 we're going to save this for later, but I'm going to get into it right now. What the fuck is the Precinct Phantom thing about? Where did you... Where- <laughs> Because I remember first hearing your name time ago and being like, what the? Pre- precinct what? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. such a long ass name. And I'm doing this with everyone. I've just I've just Ron Johnson, Chills Myth, Wyatt Pearside. Why are we called that? Where, where's Precinct Phantom well, come from? It's funny you say, I, was, I said just before we started, I've, uh, I'm about the Ron Johnson, I don't know when this is going to come out, but the Ron Johnson um, episode has dropped today. So I've watched half of that. And when you were talking, Ron, Ron was saying, I've got a long list of, you know, bad names. I was thinking, I'm definitely in that list. Surely <laughs> I must be in that list. But... Um, I have no, there is no story. Um, I, when I was, I've been rapping since I was 12 years old. Damn. So, like, I had a is that poor name, name. Listed? No. Right. I had a poor name to start with, which I won't divulge. Oh, just, please. Just, no, I won't, I'm not even going to divulge. <laughs> okay. It's just a nothingness, though. It's just one of them, you know. Nothing, I had one of them, Nothingness yeah. names. Fair enough. Um, and at some point, I thought, this, this can't do. Uh, so, sat down to think of a name and literally just... Picking some cool words, do you know what I mean? Alliteration, I think as well. Because I grew up in a CD era, I was very conscious. This gets sound mad, but I was conscious of leafing, going to HMV, leafing through records, it all alphabetized. Yeah. You don't like. You'd be hard pressed to name me ten rappers with a name beginning with P. It's true. So I thought, well, you know, this is all factors into it. Like, yeah, I mean, it's very Googleable. There ain't a lot of precinct phantoms out there. You don't, don't have the pre- you put XP on Spotify and there's about five thousand results of you various need to be able things. To spell it though. Which, yeah, yeah. Which, Precinct Pre- Phantom, that, uh, which, which has let me down. <laughs> <laughs> promoters have let you down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that name came about. So you've been rapping since twelve. So we'll just briefly. So you're you're from Lincoln originally. I've seen to have been doing this Dubai podcast, feeling bad about coming from Kent. And every motherfucker's. I'm not even from Lincoln originally. Made, oh right, where so, are you from um, originally? I'm from a place called Dis. Uh, Dis, which uh, is Ipswich way, right? Yeah, Ipswich, Norwich. Ah. It's the border, Norfolk and Suffolk. It's the border of Norfolk and Suffolk. Damn. But my mum is from Lincoln. My dad's from Doncaster. Nice. So I'm the only person in my family from the south. So then I moved. So a lot of my family's from Lincoln. Yeah. Um, was always up there as a, as a child anyway, visiting, etc. Yeah. And then we moved in 2008. Right. 
and then yeah, so I was to Lincoln that is to Lincoln. And you were how old in 08? I would well, I would have been fourteen, okay. turning fifteen. So we moved for my GCSE, starting start GCSE. Damn, so. that's ha- that's hard going straight into a school at GCSEs. Yeah. Like, that must have been it was annoying. yeah, it was hard. <laughs> kind of it sounds dramatic, but like it is a, that was one of the rough hard period, hard like week two weeks because I've been I've said this to someone recently as well. Like I think that. My school was divided into two, mm-hmm. so like you had six forms in one, six forms in another, say, and that's who you did your lessons with. So then obviously GCSE, you pick subjects, so it starts to split. Yeah. But you... because of that, everyone's got those social groups, friendship yeah, groups, like yeah. proper solidified. So, and then there's this fucker who's yeah, just exactly. started school and you're like, oh, new kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. brutal for you. It was hard, but, you know, a week, two weeks, and you, you were kind sold. of just ingrained into it. I think as soon as word got out that I rapped. Yeah, like, so do you, do you manage to use that as a bit of a kind of... I wouldn't say it? use it. I can't even remember how it got out. I don't think I would. I was saying, like, oh, yeah, I'm a rapper, because if it was now, if I was that age now, I think people would be like, oh, sick, but... Back then, it it's wasn't cool to a rap, bro. Like, yeah, it really yeah, yeah. wasn't. Especially if you... I don't know what it was like in London or big cities, Birmingham, etc. But just in, you know, in the sticks, really. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. You know, you got a bit of judgment, really, for doing it, which so, I don't think happens now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. So, um, but you were, so you were already rapping a bit then. Were you Precinct Phantom at that point, 2008 in Lincoln? It would Age have been 14? about that time when about I would have changed the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Probably because... New school, people starting to hear it, getting better as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? And and so yeah. What it was your journey uh, writing for the first time? Then did you did you like just hear the music and be like, oh, want to get on a bit of that? Or what was the? How did you get? How did you get to your first bars? Um, I don't know really. I, I, to be honest, looking back, I think it's just a, being a fan of it. Like, just li- lose yourself by Eminem. Heard that when I was about what eleven. Nice. When would that, when would that come out? Uh, eight two, mile time. Th- two, three, yeah, so yeah. I mean, nine, ten. Did you watch the film as well? So you yeah. swept up in the whole yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shortly after, well, I would have watched it after because I remember I wasn't allowed the stuff with swearing on it for a time. <laughs> so I had to make do with watching the hits and that Cost. music channels and stuff like that. So that's how I would get my rap consumption. Yeah. And then I got Eminem Encore, the album for Christmas. Right. Which obviously, if you listen to that album, <laughs> it's bad. Um, <laughs> What's your opinion on that album? Just on the I side, like it, do you like it? I yeah? like it because that was the point. I'm, this is because I'm generationally. That's the point where I was like, "Fuck this guy." A lot <laughs> so of people. It's people, but people. It's, it's interesting. Nostalgia that for me. A new generation got onto it at that yeah, point. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. There's songs like Big Weenie on that, and all like my first single where he's kind of first starting to play with the accent. So I think being a kid, 10, 11, that yeah. appeals to that immaturity. I get it. And then I think. I've gone through a period in my life where I didn't rate that album as much, but now looking back, I think that album's one of the, uh, those one first four albums. albums. Yeah. A lot of people say first three, some maybe first two. Yeah. I think first three, Mar- Slim Shady, Marshall, Ma- Marshall Mathers and Eminem show. Yeah, people that like that trio, innit? But I would say Encore is, is in there too, yeah, in for there. you. Um, and that so, got, yeah. yeah, got that. And then from then, I think my parents just strictness lapsed. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get Rich or Die Try and 50 Cent, all of that kind of Sick. stuff. So getting into all of that, I had a paper round, so I used to just like buy all my pocket money, any money that I would make at you know, a, a young age, I would spend on CDs. Amazon Sick, used to, I've told this story before, I always tell this story. Not to make, Amazon, not, uh, yeah, not Amazon used to have this thing where you would say you went on like, you know, Freeway from Rockefeller, for instance, a rapper from Philadelphia, right. went on his album on Amazon, you would have it on the side like top 25 albums from Philadelphia oh. and you'd be able to, other people would have put together and so that's Mad. how I would I don't remember Amazon doing stuff. that that's like, quality yeah, so yeah, you yeah. could just follow on and go yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah. shit and that shit because you uh, just like fast forward in a bit like my my understanding of you man you've got really encyclopedic knowledge of hip hop really and you're always kind of you're, even on your Instagram posts and stuff you'll just be posting up CDs and I'm like damn yeah, yeah, yeah. that's all like 3-6 Mafia yeah, yeah, yeah. and some of that I've had since I was 12 amazing 13, like, so, so just building that CD collection and getting into it from that and being a fan of it then it's, I think if you're a fan of something and it's something that you can do, yeah. like anyone can write lyrics. Of course. Um, I was always a creative writer, I suppose, growing up, stories, stuff like that, like as a kid. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I think that ability, interest, whatever, all factors into it. So then you just, just want to want to try your own hand at it, don't you? Like, Definitely. And so were you rapping it? What beats were you rapping over then? Were oh, just it's stuff that you all had garbage, on a CD bro. And what? It's all garbage. Like, do you remember on, you know, Dat Piff? Yes. That mixtape site. You used to be able to get... Beat if tape. you listen to old, like, 
mixtape joints from American heads, UK heads. You often hear it at the start, it'll go J Arms or something. Yeah, yeah. J Arms, J -Arms beats, was beats, this, beats. Sequ this uh, series of mixtapes where it was just all the industry instrumentals and stuff like that. So I'd just be rapping to them. I had a little dictaphone. So I'd be rapping on, on that when I was like 12, 13. Sick. American accent, talking about Cold. bare stuff I didn't do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, man, like that was, that was, but I think everyone starts like that, really. Well, yeah, I certainly did, man. That's literally my story, pretty much identically, man, apart from probably two Eminem albums before, but I was still influenced by that. Still collected loads of CDs from every penny in my pocket money. And then, yeah, we were rapping an American accent over sort of ripped beats from yeah, online, man. man. <laughs> it's funny how it works, man. But so um, was there... Uh, when did you move to Leeds? Because obviously your you were getting you, you your rapping must have got more and more serious. Did it get you were rapping on bullshit beats? But then was there a point where you were like working with people in and around Lincoln, or wasn't it before you moved to Leeds before you were starting to do shit? When so I moved to Leeds when I was eighteen for uni. Okay. Um, so when Leeds College of Music, you did Leeds College right? of Music. Yeah. What I course with that? Music Arvind. production. Sick. Yeah. Um, so t I think at that point I wanted to. My vision was to become like a studio engineer something like that mixing engineer oh, whatever true. something in that that in that old kind man's of, game that one <laughs> well and I, I don't have the ear for it to be honest with you Fair like enough. once you get started doing it i'm thinking you know what's a life setting up mics I want, yeah, if i'm gonna do word. that i want to be mixing <laughs> but i ain't got the ear for it yeah, like. yeah, yeah. so um not devaluing that of course no because, of course you know, there, there's a lot of skill in that but was it a three-year course and did yeah, you, you yeah, did yeah, all yeah, three yeah. did you uh yeah yeah nice. yeah, yeah, yeah i did a three-year course so um in terms of like making music, so in, I did music tech, music technology as an A-level, and at my school they had a music studio. Um, so I started to learn how to, that's probably the, you know, through that, that was what the part of the A-level course I like doing, so that you think you're gonna continue to like that in three years, but of course life happens and yeah, your interests yeah. change. But yeah. um, I was mainly just learning how to use a studio, taking rip beats into that studio in, in Lincoln in my school, yeah. recording stuff over like Eminem beats, J. Cole beats still, stuff like that. Yeah. Starting to put them on Bandcamp. Oh, um, yeah? Just as like free stuff. You Sick. Know. Um, then I moved to Leeds, took all that stuff offline <laughs> because I'd started, well, I just found my sound, I would say then. I'd, I'd found like... Yeah, when did the American accent fuck off? Oh, around, long before the, then. Long before, long before, yeah, before yeah, then. Yeah, 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 like, well, yeah before I I'd even moved to Lincoln, like first couple of years you start and then you, then you drop that. But the, I just wasn't good enough really, I don't think. And then... Lincoln starting to develop my skill, Leeds continuing to develop my skill, but really finding my sound in terms of boom bap and the underground hip hop, like high focus kind of influence, all yeah. that kind of era of hip hop. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Leeds College of Music, you're surrounded by musicians. I met like other MCs, Wheezy Jefferson. Um, How was he on that course? Yeah, Sick. Chief Wiggs was Sick. in the year. Of no, he was doing a foundation degree, I believe, at the same time. Was Pitch 92 on that course or something? He else? was, year above. Year above, yeah. nice. Uh, Will, wow, what a... Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I didn't know Pitch massively well, but I knew him through a mate of mine called Will Williamson, who um, is doing sick things as Father Funk, uh, Ghetto Funk producer. Dope. Um, I think he lives out in Canada now, but he's doing crazy things. I've still got an album that's available on Bandcamp SoundCloud called I'm Just a Rapper. Will made all of those beats. Ah. So I made that in the first year of uni. Do you know put what? that out second year uni and then then this Wigs is on that album right yes i tripped over yeah. this yesterday because i was looking through your stuff and it, it's we'll, we'll sort of get onto this but there's a really in your in your spotify releases or the things that you were like effectively making money from um or that you're you're like bigging yourself up about there's a, there's a real 2020 cutoff yeah and then and i was like oh damn there must have been like because i've definitely heard about you before 2020 and looked at your soundcloud and like oh shit yeah, yeah, he's yeah. gone back to 2014 yeah. and stuff and i listened to him and it was like these are like pure boom but yeah, like yeah, yeah proper yeah it's crack crackers man so that was all they were all produced by will williamson first yeah? 10 yeah I, i'm just a rapper um <laughs> there are 10 10 songs on there how do you um, feel about that now? Can you listen? Are you, are you proud of it listening back, or is it like? Yeah, yeah. Um, everything's got its place. It's all progression. Yeah, I think, and I, that's why it's still out there. Because as you say, like I, I definitely reset 2020 in terms of release the the how I was releasing music, where I was releasing music, the quality of the releases, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like, I couldn't have done that without doing all of that journey, of you know course, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't want, didn't want, didn't want, didn't want to wipe that off or whatever. No, exactly. And I'm still kind of happy with it to an extent. Like it was, it's still, I'm still proud of it, but obviously you just improved, don't you? Like, yep. but, but things before that, as I say, 
the things that are removed. That's why I say I found my sound because I'm happy to still have that stuff out. So I must have found my sound. Yeah. You know what I mean, like before that, I'm not happy with. Flower. I wouldn't be happy with people hearing it. Yeah. So understood. Do you know what I mean? So I think any if you if you were to see that music as soon as you see it's in 2014, it was released. You'd be like, oh well, this is why it sounds like. That. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I was looking through, man, and it was like it just kept scrolling and scrolling. And that kind of still stands up today. I've, I've sort of mentioned it before. I said yeah. it on the Chills podcast, man. Like, you'll come to the studio with, like, six things to do, smash all six, come back a week later, have another six things yeah. to do, completely different or whatever. It's like, is that prolific prolificness always, like, been the same throughout your life? You've just always been, you're yeah, always man. writing. You've always got to... Definitely, definitely. Um, something that you said in your in the Ron Johnson episodes um, struck a chord with me as well, like, yeah. where you said um, have it, you have to have an end goal when you're creating. Yeah. And I can identify with that completely. Like, You've always got like an album or an EP yeah, or a yeah. such if and I'm such in your head. If I'm making something like, oh, that's going there, that's going there. I'm linking with this producer to make this project and I might have four songs with that done, but but then I've got this other project and this other project and da 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 And... Does that excite you? Like having a next project and a next thing or like, is it is it... It's got its pros and cons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it does excite me, but what? then also it can just get daunting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? what's the daunting <laughs> element of that, do you think? Um... I think I'm conscious of the fact that I'm, I, I work with other people as well. Yep. So if it's just me, I can put as much time into stuff as I want. But when I'm relying on other people, mm. I don't want to be a constant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting people's ears. You, know you really do. You really do have to as well. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Constantly sending them emails without pissing them off. But like, oh, bro. And Brother, <sighs> like me and Tom are doing this. Chills are doing this album um, of ciphers where it's... Uh, me and four other MCs on every song, Jesus 10 songs. Jesus fucking Christ. And we're actually like halfway through it. And like we've got like four, maybe five songs that are finished. Definitely four songs that are finished. Yeah. But that's taken like 18 months, probably more. And that is a constant R. Who's Just longing it out in. Just Who's, longing? <laughs> Who's longing it out? Are, you we, know, are we calling you know, it out? You know who you are. <laughs> Stop longing it out. And nah. what, we're doing some 16s as well. Just do some 16s and stuff to finish them off. Is, it? is that the case? Or? As in, what, am I just waiting You're for just that? waiting for, like, like, a few guys to, yeah. Various, to be honest, various. Um, some songs have just got me on them. Some songs I'm just waiting for one one, one MC to finish <sighs> it off, etc. But it's, it's been a back burner project. I'm just using Cost. that as the example to... That's something you really do have to ride that line between can you get the stuff I'm waiting for back to me, but also, like, I'm not, just I'm not trying to piss you off, him. bro. Like, you know, yeah, like, you're yeah, helping yeah. me out by even getting on the project. So. It, it was funny. I was like, I've, I've, I've been a collaborative rapper a lot of my, a lot of my rap career, and it wasn't until... Because I was doing stuff for Flame Griller, and then it was like obvious that Flame Griller was going to not really write that much, and suddenly I was like, shit, I need some solo work. Fortunately, I was able to kind of start writing solo stuff, but I think there's so much merit to having that, having having your own thing that you can just be like, I'll work on that, and I'll put that out, and then if anything else happens with the rest of it, then cool. But, like, you still... Because I've just kind of fucked off collaborations completely because I just can't be arsed with chasing people whereas you've kind of got both running side by side really strongly and like every time you come to the studio you've got a few solo stuff to do but then you've got oh this guy sent me a track so let's mix that and you uh, uh, you seem to you work with like so many names that i'd never heard of before you like brought them through and like recorded them so much. is that do you are you like a you're like a proper scholar with it when you're like online looking through because some of these people i'd never heard of before and it seems like you've like gone out of your way to search them have they, have they come to your attention is it just by digging around that's a good question um thanks <laughs> i don't really know to be honest that's why it is a bit mad like i think try i try and keep my finger on the pulse of stuff i'm active on youtube yeah i'm active on like commentators on on the game i try and keep up to date with what they're saying Commentators um, on the game. Who well, the fuck's commentating on like, it? Do you mean just, like in podcasts and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who's talking like, about like, who? like, you know, academics, like Young Spray, all kinds of people. I, I keep in tune with with people. Yeah. Um, Instagram. I'm try. I try and like use it in a trying to discuss. If they, you'll often see someone sharing people. Do you know what I mean? You're you're explore. But TikTok's quite good for it. To be fair, like, yeah. not that I've actually. I'm saying this like I'm on TikTok and I'm finding loads of people, but you go on TikTok, oh, there's rap on there. Like you can Cost. find rappers on there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the way that I've always consumed music just still factors into my brain in that way. So I'm always still trying to keep on the pulse of like, so then that factors into 
local people, people that I can communicate with, like and, and collaborate with. Do you know what I mean? So One thing that Chills reminded me of was you used to fucking write for Wordplay. Yeah. And that, so, and that kind of... This is what I'm saying. That kind of links All of that into kind that of, because yeah. you, you... So how, how did that come about? But I can't even remember what, what sort of years was that when you were doing that? Because you're not really writing from now or could, if you need, had an article, could you chuck one up? Is it What's um, your relationship with them now? I, I, I don't have a relationship with any kind of... Any of the... Um, publishers that I used to used to work with just for no sour reason or anything just that I'm not doing it anymore so Fair I, I, I kind of cut myself off from doing that really just because um, I started making more music and the music started doing a bit more well I suppose yeah yeah um, yeah how I got into it is a bit of a long story really um, good not long story but like when I was a kid I used to write I used to have like a blog Right. Um, where I would interview people over MSN and stuff. Sick <laughs> over MSN as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Interviewing so. rappers is whack, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've got to be good at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, name drop here. I, I, I've interviewed Professor Green over Ooh, MSN. Like, back over in the MSN? day. Yeah, yeah, before he dropped his first album. Like, So, as in, I think mixtapes would have been out. This would, I don't know when this would have been. 2008, I yeah. guess. I've got an interview, a written interview on Wordplay as a rapper. Shouts to Evo who who hit me back up with them. I know Evo from a long time ago. Um, and if you so if you type in Google Precinct Phantom Wordplay magazine, um, you'll find that interview. And the and the interview with Professor Green is linked on there, ha, no so way. you can find it. Like, Sick. Because um, the old blog, the old WordPress stuff is still all up there. I've never taken any any of it down. Right. So I was doing that as a kid. As I said, as I've said, I was doing that creative writing. Da da da. Yeah. Um, so that's always been something I'm interested in. And then I went to uni, and part on the course there was a journalism module. So I got back into it through that. Perfect. Um, and then you bet you a distinction with that. I actually got a uh, merit for that what module. I know. Yeah, it was good. Good grade though. Good. Good score. I was h- quite high if I remember right. Though. Fair play. Um, and I will never knock it because for my um, dissertation on the production course, we had to submit like a studio quality demo EP like half an hour's length or something yeah. and i did a rap album with live musicians from some lads that i knew on my course sick and i got a first for it damn for that and i got nice. two one for the degree but i got a first live for, the, for a rap album, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. It's, it's out you can find it on bandcamp tisky no tisky 1.5 ep oh, you, that can, rings so you can listen to okay, it okay yeah. i do want to listen to that sick. um yeah so wordplay um yeah so i was doing this mod this journalism module and then that must have been third year as well. Yeah, it would have been because um, I was living in Bruden on Mount, and I had to submit an interview with somebody, and I knew Snow, Joe Snow from Defenders, oh, yeah. through. I'm, I must have had a blog. Yeah, I'd had a blog before, and I think maybe I was doing some reviews for Wordplay by this point. It was in album reviews. Yeah, yeah. I reviewed like. like I remember Raz Cass and Apollo Brown's album, nice. um, Blasphemy, I think that's called, that's a sick album. I reviewed that, that was one of my favourite albums of, of that year. Yeah, so I must have been working for them, and working for them, and writing for them. And then I had to do this interview, I knew Snow through doing live reviews for Guilty Party when oh, he was putting stuff word. on at Belgrave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I link, I'd, I'd message Snow, da da da, and then he brought Priest and Dan's through to Brudenell, and we had to sit down and, and, and interview. And then I wrote that up and I think I'd already agreed this with Wordplay that because I had to do this for uni, I wanted to interview, you know what I mean? Link up with Defenders, use it, for, and why not try and use it for something? Yeah. If I've got to write this interview anyway, why not try and, you know, use it for something? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, shouts to Craig at Wordplay, who I was in contact with at that time. Um, he okayed the piece and, and, and yeah, that was in the sim print <coughs> in the magazine with Run the Jewels on the cover. So yeah, not fucking bad. So then from that, I started doing a lot of. I've interviewed loads of people. Um, I don't want to just sit here and and start. I don't want. I don't want to sound just like a name dropper. I mean, it's never like, going to be as good as Professor Green. <laughs> I've ever said no. <laughs> um, but like Lee Scott, Flip Tricks, um, Ed Scissortongue. But then I, I I interviewed guys from around here as well. Technico, Sick. Dan's uh, North A's, and all of them are on Bearded Magazine. Um, is that a different thing? To yeah, right, right. Yeah, so I, I, I did man, a lot of stuff. Man, you're a prolific bearded. fucking journalist yeah, as well. Yeah, I was doing. I was. I was on it for a, a good number of years, but it's just hard to make money from it. If I'm honest with you, like, I mean, you're a rapper. That I would say equally hard. It is, <laughs> but it, there's more. Tan, it's more tangible. Like, 
it's, you can make money from rap and from music with on your own. Whereas yeah. with, I'm not saying there's mega bucks, but a few there is around. there is some money in it. You can sell stuff. Yeah. Whereas with writing, like unless you're lucky enough to be able to get an in into Were they all a, free? That, that yeah, I didn't get paid free. for anything. I never got paid for any anything. Run the jewels I'll, on the front and shit. You think that'd be a, like a few quid for an article, but I suppose you how just much are they selling? Like, yeah, how, that's how true. Much, it's like, true. I'm really, not in today's world, how much are they selling up and down the country to start paying for every <sighs> well, they article? They're like, not in print anymore, are they? It's just online only. I don't only, even is think it? they are. No. This is the point. Like hip hop connection, like yeah, that died. Like. You can still get XXL in the source, but rarely. I think that's only once a quarter now anyway, if and, that. And, and they are shoved them. with adverts. Yeah, not, yeah, there's nothing in it. There's nothing in it. They, they always were, but yeah, like, yeah. it's bad now. I picked up an XXL recently and it is. I mean, I don't know how you meant to, how you meant to find out about stuff really other than, as you say, dipping through TikTok or whatever because there aren't those outlets like we used to have, like you say, HHC in the source or whatever. YouTube's good. YouTube is yeah, good. If you like, yeah. actually make use of, subs- of your subscriptions and, and you know keep on, on top of what people are putting out, like... You can keep up with it, I think. So, was it a financial thing re- reason? Because obviously, you were good at it and you in- and you enjoyed it at the time you were doing it, the-, the journalism kind of stuff. Was it? Can both exist in the same point, or do you feel you had to concentrate on the on the on your own rapping rather than writing as well? Because I wonder sometimes whether it's as e- you know, if you're concentrating on on the on that journalism side, it's harder to like have that sort of rap career, as it were. And also, you don't want to be like writing yourself and writing your own Wikipedia page. I'd sort of put in, you know what I mean? Like almost like, oh, there's these rappers I've been talking to, and also my music as well. You know what I mean? Like there was a bit of confliction in that. Um, funny story, I suppose. I am. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to this already. <laughs> it's not. I, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd. This was must have been through snow. I'd got guest list to cover a to review a, a Luna C gig mm. and Wiggs was supporting him. Oh yeah. Not supporting him, sorry, hype being being the hype man mm-hmm. um for Luna show and obviously I knew Wiggs from uni. Yeah of course. Um so I was on I was getting in da 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 and I said Oh I'm I'm on the guest list. I'm I'm reviewing this for wordplay. Um I don't think I've ever told this story. Um and so Wiggs is there, oh, I know him and Da, da, da. So I'm saying, oh, whatever. I made some comment like, oh, you know, yeah, better impress me or something. Da, da, da. <laughs> so I remember that would be dumb. Went upstairs, like, and then so I'm with a load of my mates from uni, and Luna had just been, I believe, supporting Hopson at the time. Oh, I remember that. And they'd been doing yeah. this thing where they'd got this beat and they would get a rapper out of the crowd to come and spit their verse, spit their one of their verses on there. And obviously, I'm meant to be reviewing the show. Yeah. I'm. You know what I mean? All my mates are there. <laughs> I know Wiggs. They're all pushing me up. I get up. Wiggs, I, I know this guy. He's all right. He is. Da, da, da. So I get on the mic, do this first. It goes down really, really well. So, like, get off stage. So all of that. But then obviously I'm left in this dilemma. Like, do I cover that? What a great, I- <laughs> what a great night as Precinct Phantoms took the mic and by storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Precinct think I even mentioned it in the end. I'm just, just going to leave nice, this completely nice. out of the beat. They even let a local young MC do his thing. <laughs> But that didn't actually factor into why. It's, to be honest with you, it, and it's not fine. I'm saying financial, like that was the break, make or break reason. It, it really wanted time more than anything. Do you know what I mean? Like once you start rapping, uh, you know, I've got a life as well. Like yeah, yeah. To balance my life, my music, and like consistent well. journalism. Yeah. It's just a lot. Yeah, word. You know? It is required, and it's in a, in a way, it's a shame because obviously you've got that mind for it and that sort of. Because people put in the effort in, because it's all very well going, oh, I've just seen this, so I'll post about it. But like you actually yeah. did the digging yeah, and exactly. actually had the conversations with people and stuff. And that's so rare and so vital, I think, to just keep the scene alive, keep the culture alive. Do you know what I mean? And so, document like, it as well. Word, exactly, man. Rather than it just being tracks that sort of disappear, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. a week after they've been put out or whatever. People so. don't, un- like, that's in- in very important. Like, that's why podcasts and a lot of the media stuff that people that that whole space yeah i think is very important because like not saying i, I agree with everybody no. you know or i think everybody's opinion is necessary but it's important to document all of this because you know in 15 20 years people don't remember the nuanced nah, parts nah, of the nah. scene do you know what i mean so and i don't think you had that in like the 90s like radio interviews to an extent but yeah yeah even yeah. that like from the 90s like how are you going to track that in, stuff out in like, a magazine or not in it, or nothing at all in it like you know, i didn't exist like. i will say like writing like not journalism in the same way but that is something i'm going to pick back up over the next like 
that's kind of part of my long plan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To, I've got some projects. So I won't really like. I might mention to mention them to you after, but I don't really want to put it out. But is out that there a journalist? Don't yet. talk specifically about it. But that is like a journalism angle yeah, as well. Is that yeah, about music yeah. and stuff? Yeah, definitely. Like Amazing. like books, basically. Oh, I, I won't sick. go into like the ideas and concepts for it, but I want to get back into writing from that perspective as opposed to like online journalism or magazines because I, I think I think it's a limp I think you can do limited things with that unfortunately I wish you could do more but I just think the times are the times yeah 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 I get it fair play so um, fucking as I said before 2020 just seems like this point where the Prison Phantom changed and was not that this style of music because it's not like you put yourself in a because you because you do a bit of trap, a bit of drill, even a bit of hip hop at times. What I mean, it was basically whatever chills is <laughs> putting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is amazing, man. Oh, I'm on board it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'll hop on it, man. But they, they say, like, what what was that? Was there a thought behind that cut off? That where the sound, because obviously you didn't go, oh, well, all that SoundCloud, I'm a rapper, all the boom bap stuff. You didn't go, well, I'll put that on Spotify because maybe it'll make a point, point, not, not 7p for me in that thing. Was there a, there, was there a sort of, a mental point where you went right. I'm. This is the new me, and this is this is the sort of stuff I'm doing from this point on. Yeah, man. 2020. It was New Year, new me. Yeah, was it? Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a. I would say, like, if I'm honest with you, and I don't want to just sound like a, like a moaner, but Please, I just, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just found the whole UK hip hop boom bap sound. I just got very bored of it, if I'm honest with you. Like, Fair. As a, this is a story I've commonly heard. Man. Yeah. As a, as, as, from all sides of it, as a consumer, as a performer, yep. as a musician. It's like, been done to death. Yeah. And you'll hear new stuff coming out of the usual labels. Yeah. And it's like, this sounds like every other yeah, yeah, music. Yeah. There's it's no okay, like, nothing. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I get it's you. It's okay, but it's just not like, you know, it's not um, inspiring. Yeah, I don't think. And Whereas I, you were finding that sound more inspiring that I you kind of went with. Definitely, as, as a consumer, I've always liked grime music. I've always liked bass heavy music. You know, goes down well in the clubs as well. And that's one thing you and Chills did, like yeah. gig to fuck. And you yeah. can't do a bit of a boom bap. Everyone, yeah, but it's exactly. like your shit was like on it, on exactly. it, on it. Like, exactly. yeah, I mean, it gets the crowd interested. I, so we'd, we'd, um, this might not be exactly right in terms of timeline, but we'd started making what became one for axiom um and you know we were making songs that some of them became one for axiom some of them ended up on punctuation we've still got some songs from that era that you know we've still got in the archive kind of thing yeah um and we started making that thomas covered this obviously in, on on his um podcast mm. you know pretty accurately really that we, we we just i remember having a conversation where we both were just like i don't want to speak for chills because I, I, he obviously you know is i would say probably was more still in that UK hip hop sound and yeah. more so than I was, but I think I still think he could identify with what I was saying with, mm. you know, kind of, kind of getting a bit stale. So we started making this other music, you know, more grime influence, 140 BPM stuff. Yeah. Um, I would say I've always have kept that hip hop, like boom bap element to something about it, whether it's just my presence on the mic, the way I'm writing, way yeah. my rhyme schemes are, are patterned, whatever. Yeah. Um, but we played at, Shouts to T Jackson and CDB from Stunt Tour. We played at an event that they put on at the Faversham. Nice. Um, Tom played that, and then I, I played, and I've got a feeling we must have done a couple of these grime tunes there, and then we supported your, you guys, Flame Griller at Santiago. Santiago. Oh, big gig. That was a good. Put on by Mark. Shouts, Mark Mushington. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep, smashed that gig. And I'm, if I'm mistaken about the Stunt Tour one, that was certainly we demoed a lot of that grimy stuff starting people are feeling it and this is what i'm saying the yeah. reception in the room is like the difference is palpable between boom bap events real life will change you that's it you can sit in your bedroom making all sorts of boom bap but if, if you go out and no one's feeling it when you're doing it live but if they're feeling another kind of thing you it's a, a, actually the ones the ones that work best live you're like okay how do i sort of take that element of it and do it again because yeah. i want you want that liveliness in the room don't you you don't want to just be like oh you're just gonna have to take this and enjoy it fuck yes not your head and that's it that's yeah, as far yeah, as it yeah. goes like which you know i'm not, not so i mean i'm not saying that people were, were were not enjoying it but the way that people show their enjoyment in a grime setting or a drum and bass setting is completely different like Shouts to Kais Cortez. He brought me through to um, perform at a show 
uh, where he was supporting Mr. Traumatic mm. um, and performing in a, a drum and bass arena, so, you know, like that, is another step entirely. Like the the difference in the crowd, like they all just they need to be on it. On it, they're yeah. feeding on what people are saying, and they're, they're, yeah. that's the same in a in a you know dance music, bass music kind of grime grime music environment as well. I think so. Yeah. It's just so much more fun for me, um, and. And I, I like the music more, but as I said, to be honest, it's more fun. Like when I get on a set, like I think you can tell that I'm having a, a good, good time. time. Like, you know, yeah, so. yeah. I and reckon you guys could do a boom bap set if you were asked to do one, but you, you're right. You probably would have more fun at yeah. a, a night like that. And it's funny and you do, and well, you'll end up with a load of, you'll end up with a sausage fest, a boom bap thing. Lasses aren't really into that vibe, but when you, when you talk to, we talk to a lot of people who turn up to the kind of nights that you've been playing more recently. Their kind of favorite genre of music is generally stuff I can dance to. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff I can, you know what I mean, move to. And it makes a lot of sense. Like, definitely, yeah, definitely. And I think Leeds is a, a, a really good mixing pot for all of that as well. So it's, yeah. a, good, it's a good setting for it. Um, I remember speaking with Dan's back in the day about on one of the interviews. And I remember this has always just stuck with me that about his sound and how the bass heavy influence of, of, of music in the north, you know, in Sheffield, in Leeds, has been um, such a big inspiration to his sound. And I think so, you can exploit that from looking at it from a live, like live music um, perspective as well. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, you, more than any other rapper I've ever heard in my entire life, um, big up Coca Cola. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> To a point where me and Chills were waiting for the Coca Cola bar in bars. We hadn't heard these bit yet when you're in the studio going, ah, there it was. Yeah, yeah. We hadn't had the Coca Cola. Ah, oh, there it is. It's an innovation. <laughs> <laughs> and what, so, how do you feel about that? Because obviously, hip hop. All a lie. It's all entertainment. It's all, is it? It's all, all entertainment. It's all allegedly. I think that's fair enough. It's all we, entertainment. We can, we can caveat that. Well, I'm sure it was the same with a lot of rappers. Because um, obviously, I, w- I would listen to a lot of hip hop back in the day and kind of went, oh, I really fancy smoking this weed they're always yeah, yeah, yeah. that sounds great um, and kind of did a sort of as a result of hip hop and I got five on it and stuff like that but you don't really hear them talk them talking that much about um, drugs beyond weed and I don't know why that is necessarily because obviously it still plays a part I've heard the odd ecstasy bar and stuff like that but What's your thought on that? Is that like because it's kind of such a commonplace thing in that kind of music because it's like that keep it dancing all night kind of thing that you does that carry? And what are people's response to that? Do people go, oh, fucking hell, there's a lot of bars. They're like, yeah, Cola. bars. You know, I've never had a, any comment on it. No like, one ever said shit mad. about it. That is like, crazy. Is mad, I would it, say like. you're like the, the, the foremost Coca-Cola yeah, yeah, bar yeah. rapper in the UK. <laughs> I don't, well, one of, I suppose. <laughs> I have no nothing shouts, problem. Shouts Cass is dead. Shouts Dirty Dyke. There's a few, man represented for it <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know uk culture in it uk I, culture. I talk about you know drinking partying like student kind of vibes i suppose still that's always if you listen to some of the boom bap stuff like back in the day i think there's still that element to, to some of my lyricism it does get a bit much sometimes though <laughs> it, does, it does get a bit much yeah I was yeah, I, 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 when I rewound back to 2014 bars there were like weed bars as well yeah, and yeah, like yeah. those kind of things is that like a when you sit down to write is like and you've got do you write do you write to a you write to a beat right you don't just write blank and then oh this will work on that beat which way around do you do it varies it oh, does okay. vary it does vary most of the time I'm writing to a beat but it's not necessarily the beat that the lyrics are going to end up on ah um, interesting sometimes I'm writing to like I can write if there's music on it doesn't have to be instrumental I can write to like if I can have a playlist of different grime music on or different boom bap music on and that can help like it can make you um you can be inventive with some of the pun- like punchlines and references like not on a cat in other people's lyrics stuff like but if a song comes on with a cool name, but there's a punchline there, isn't there straight away? Sure, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, the, the, you know, you can just use the... Ra- da, da, da. So stuff like that, um, you know, playing with different flows and stuff like that that you hear and try and take some influence from. Um, but I can also write in silence, like if I'm... That's impressive. If I'm out and about and... I'd, but I would always have to... So what, what, whether, in whatever environment I'm writing, whether it's to a beat that I know I'm going to use, to a, a different beat, to music, to, to silence. Like, I know that by the time I come to record whatever I've written, or, or certainly come to mix whatever I've written, um, 
it will change. Like the flow will get changed. Yeah. And yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So um do you have like a? Uh, do, you, do you write because because you, your stuff does have punches? So a lot of, there's a lot of punch lines or like certain things where it's like like a cle like clever bars and stuff. Because I'm trying to try, like I'm trying to think of you. I've uh, ever heard like a content like rap from you, and I'm not sure I have where it's like I'm specifically writing about this situation. It's sort of like just broadly like lyricism, stream of consciousness, stuff, stream of consciousness time, stuff. Yeah. How fucking good you are! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing, which is you know, very, very, very <laughs> unashamed. Unashamed. <laughs> like stories all the time of rappers, and, and, and honestly, what a lot of people want to hear in rap anyway. They don't, I, you know. People who listen, people who listen to my shit and don't like it, are usually like, I just didn't want to know about like you paying your taxes. I wanted to like disappear off, which a lot, you know, that kind of your kind of rap does does provide for for them really. But do you have like, do you, do you go, oh, that's a fucking good one, and then write it down and then try and piece that into a bar, or is or is it more just as you're doing the stream of consciousness, you're like, ah, this is a, ah, you know what I mean? Does that inspire you? Um, or do you copy and paste and put things in? Again, a, a, a combination of it all, really. Um, sometimes, if I've if I've got, I have like different notes apps for different, um, different notes apps, different notes. Yeah. Um, for different, for different kind of so. like, I've got like a deep ones. Do you know what I mean? So, for instance, so if I and that, I could even just put a concept in there. What's like, a deep one sound like for you? Right? Have I heard a deep? There's a few. Before? There's a few. <laughs> there's a few. Not, like, there's not too much out to be fair. Yeah. Um, there's a song on One Four Axiom called Pride, where I kind of mm. talk about living in the South, living in the Midlands, living in the North, and then a bit of like a sum up. Nice, yeah. So there's I that. that nice, I thought, there's yeah. like Bendy Bus has got a bit of a of a narrative through it, I suppose, but that's still kind of complaining about the rap scene, really. Yeah. Um, but there's a few littered in there. It's something that I need to do more of, really. If um, you if you had some mad shit going on in your life, would you? use that and write about it or would you tend not to because it's too there's too much vulnerability in doing that that's something that again it's hard to ride the line with but you know between give, not giving too much away but almost what am i comfortable yeah like telling people you're going through or like yeah well, it's, not, it's or almost like i'm it's almost like i don't mind putting it out but it's like i, I I would feel uncomfortable about other people hearing it, which surely Interesting. like Interesting, yeah, that's the point. That's the point like, of putting it out, isn't yeah, it? So yeah. if, if that's if the actually the end result of what's gonna happen from you putting it out what's, doesn't sit quite right with you. What's the discomfort there out of interest? I because I I, I I I've sort of written a few things where it's been like like deeply personal to me, but I'm like, it needs to be out there and it's the and also it's like that that situation's really helped me yeah. feel it out or whatever. What's the discomfort of other people listening? Is it just like them knowing stuff about you or is it and you wanted to keep that to yourself or not necessarily. I think it might be something to do with the fact of my own taste, really. Interesting. That it takes a lot for a deeply personal song to be to really hit me from somebody else. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of the music that I listen to is energetic, raw, aggressive yeah. rap and grime music. Yeah. I don't, I'm not in this for your feelings, brother. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> but, like, Beanie Seagull, I feel... Is it... What's that tune? Feel it in the air. Is it that tune? Oh, I'm gonna have to. Look that. I'm gonna check what oh, that damn. is. Put it in the air. Something put like it, that. Put it in the, the air. Beanie Seagull tune. That's a, one of my favourite songs. Like that is an amazing tune. Um, so there are some, you know, where people are being personal, introspective, emotional, etc. And you feel, and you feel and like it. it and it isn't. Is it cringe you out when people are like getting all personal, or is it like feel it in the air? Feel it in the, the coming air. album. Yeah. Nice. Um, does it cringe me out? Depends what they're talking about, really, and how they're doing it. But it's not what you listen to rap for. It's not what it's in the head. No, for you listen and for. so then I suppose, and because I don't make it as much, and that is one of the reasons why I don't make it as much, because I, you know it's not the kind of thing that I would choose to listen to off 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 top. Like um, the subjects that you're talking about, if you're going to talk about them, surely you want to do them with conviction and do them justice. So then, if you're not practiced at doing stuff like that. To then just suddenly, oh, now I'm going to talk about no, all of this guy. really deep emotional stuff in my life. It'll probably be crap music, like, <laughs> yeah. written in this really basic, clunky way. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, Which I get, yeah. I'm not saying definitely, but I think you would just then have to be careful. And it would, it's just difficult then to, it's a very different headspace to write in from yeah. just, oh, I'm going to write some bars and have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To like, oh, I'm going to now tackle all of this really deep stuff. Like, totally. you really got to. And that really can be as much, for. to be fair, you can be going through some shit in your life and then not even writing bars about that, but that's still a release. Yeah, it? exactly. It's still a creative release. The so emotion, the like. emotion comes through. You might be talking about other things completely, but yeah. if, if you're emotional. It's an escape as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
Yeah, nice. And um, three years of a music production course. Yeah. You had to have made some fucking beats, right? What was happened I, was there? I, was I making any beats? Surely you made. Surely part of your course was to make some beats. I just wonder what a Precinct Phantom beat sounds like. There is. You can Precinct find Phantom some. Type beat. You can find some. Can you? You can find some. What were you? What did you make them on? On. Uh, I used Reason. Okay. I used Reason back in the day. Yeah. Um, I did. Yeah, I, I did start. I did produce from when I was like what, sixteen. I had Fruity Loops back in the day as well. Yep. So. Bruh. Yeah, demo, and then I got a, a bought version as well. I've not used it for ages. Like, nice. Um, and then yeah, I used Reason, oh, Reason, Cubase, um, at, at school and GCSE. So then yeah, learned how to use Reason. Um, made a few beats on that. I'm trying to think at uni, what was I? What was I doing at uni? <laughs> uh, what was the whole? <laughs> <laughs> um, bloody hell! What was I doing? Um, did we, did we have to make any beats? Was it all just mixing and mustering and using what lo logic or whatever? Yeah, to do that? yeah, and like oh, that's dry, isn't it? Well, <laughs> mixing in, we were in like a, we had like a group for, for a studio session. We had, we had some music to film, I think, stuff like that, maybe with some of the composition elements, journalism, obviously. Like, I mean, as you get the end, as you get to, I don't know what it's like now, but as you got towards the end of the course, your actual time with tutors was on the floor really do really? you know what I mean yeah yeah so you pay for that course as well yeah our first year These with first year with the with the drives me nuts that Absolutely, you hear people mate. back in the day who got free education and you're like oh I deal with it but when you're spending money on courses yeah. and that the, the, you're not getting much tutorage like fuck off like. yeah when like we did get some in the first year but I can't like I can't remember it like that's <laughs> like that's the first time I've had to think about what was I doing in first year. I can remember what I was doing in third year because yeah. it wasn't much. Like because yeah. as I say, there was hardly any focus on that. Any it was just your like... you, you know you had your modules to complete and da 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 like. Yeah. But first year I literally can't really remember to be honest. Huh. But it was a long time ago now. Fair do. So um, your first beat so beats on reason and fruit loops were they in the boom bap kind of style and I like don't know what I don't know what style you, you'd call that. And you never wrote to them or anything like. So. No. Um. So maybe a few of them. I was thinking when day. rappers start beat making. As long as they can do a bit, it's like surely that's like you're almost growing the food that you're eating, as it were. Like I think when I was making beats, would have been when I was like 16, 15, 16, 17. Mm. And as I say, like at that age, there wasn't really anybody else who made rap music that I knew in real life. Yeah, yeah. So like when I'm writing, said I'm using bootlegged beats. From Mob Deep and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're better than what I can make as a fourteen-year-old <laughs> on Reason. That's true. That's true. I so suppose. But like, you know it's bootleg, isn't it? But yeah. But yeah, but this is, I think it would be you wouldn't have that mindset, or you'd have a different mindset if you were around a big scene of people. You you would actually, oh yeah, it can be done. But when there's just like you don't know anybody mm. who's making that music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm already like not a particularly proficient rapper at that age anyway. Yeah. Okay, Am yeah, I going to yeah. suddenly start to look when I'm making these kind of clunky beats? I think well, oh, could you just download something twenty times better than <laughs> this. So just, way, yeah, yeah. Like you know, which obviously you know pros and cons again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, I mean, you've already put out a few albums now, you and Chills, as I recall, because you record with me and we've got we've got plenty in the that hasn't come out yet yeah. that you've that you kind of either waiting for verses on or then gonna come in for a final mix of. Um, what's the what's the future looking like? Oh, well, that's what I was gonna ask because you were talking about making money from journalism versus making money from music. Like, is there a point where you're gonna be able to like quit the day job? Are you, are, you, are you making moves towards that with music or does it feel like something that's fucking hard as hell to do and make money from? Keep supporting people, we'll Keeps, get there, we'll get, we'll get there. there. In the end. Um, <laughs> it's not really uh, that viable. No, I don't think it is, to be honest. No. It's things, things getting worse, aren't they? It really does like, feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't even mean in terms of like the ability to make music and no. make money from music. I just mean things are getting worse in the country. In yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. things it's getting harder to live anyway. Yeah. So, you know, how are you going to fund? You know, it's just just getting more even more difficult, isn't it? Um, it's not really a. It's not really <laughs> like that's not what I'm aiming for. I'm just aiming for. Um, what are you aiming for? That's an interesting point. Um, UK right wide recognition, I guess, would be a start, wouldn't it? If everyone in the if everyone in every home who listened to that kind of music knew your name, would be a start. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's it's more it's more the people I respect. If I can get a like recognition from those people, yeah, um, that's what means more to me, really. Like, I say that, I say that, 
but then when you're out and about and you're performing and you know you get people come up to you after oh that was sick like yeah. see, you said you got a CD for sale let me buy that I want to, I want to support you da, da, da. Like, yeah. that's sick as well and you know that's appreciated you know with, without boundaries like but me as a rapper obviously when you get that recognition and respect from somebody that you respect like I think every that's what every rapper really is doing it for respect to your peers kind yeah, of thing, right? yeah yeah, yeah. I like see. that's what I think anyway um, that's always been what if I can achieve that that, that means more to me really um, so that really rather than financial gain yeah, um, yeah so yeah what's the what's the gig situation look like because there was a I, I sort of mentioned on the Charles podcast you were like constantly gigging yeah at one point is that something you want to keep up do you like Definitely. would you rather be out there is it about doing an album and then performing the fuck out of that and performing new tracks and just being out as much as you would you be out five days a week if you could yeah 100%, performing? 100% I mean that's a way to make money I guess if you yeah. were making like a couple hundred quid a night there's there's money in gigging you could do be doing UK tours it's just like a little tech here but if you know I think if you know enough promoters up and down the UK it is possible and jumping yeah. on thing and that but it's just always being on the road and that's the stressful bit of it well exactly and I mean that comes with cost as well then doesn't it like yeah. you know I mean I can drive I don't have a car yeah. like if you see I, if I wanted to get a, a gig in London I, mean, I can't just jump on a train yeah yeah like, yeah like, what to 150 quid if you like, get down to Bristol it's fortune not bringing worth like, it, is it so it's that those elements that make it difficult as an as a independent artist without management without like connections that span the the country to even if you do have connections to span the country unless you've got a lift or you can drive like yeah. and then what I mean I don't know now but what driving around the country that's got its own cost yeah, like, cars, there, there. yeah, so, yeah. do you know what I mean it's it, I think it is difficult I think this the live scene in locally um is is not as strong as it was for local underground independent musicians I think this year there's been some good yeah, gigs on been, yeah. I went to see Manga St. Hilaire from Roll Deep at the weekend oh he nice yeah yeah um, shouts Manga um, and there are, are are things coming up I saw a, a, an MC called Jelani Blackman a month or so ago at the wardrobe I'm just trying to get out and see what is what is being op- put on this year because like for the last couple of years since Covid there, there hasn't really been been much and back in the day I was always at everything I've seen loads of people yeah Um but that's one side of it, because like it's not like every one of those gigs has a big load of local support on it. No, no, and no. then you know there's not a huge amount of promoters in the city putting on like rap gigs really mm, anymore. Where, the, where there was a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. a couple of years ago, but pre-COVID there was a lot more definitely. And, and even, even the year that, after, like, like a couple maybe, but bubbled up a bit more. And then it's just gone then again. Really? Have you done much uh, out of town? What have you have you done much in London? Oh, I've Bristol never played in London. No, you played Bristol um, or anything. Where, no, what? not in the south to be honest. But we played um, up in Stockton a few times. Shout out to Ryan Lester's crew. That's right. They've got um, a good scene up in there. Yeah, Stockton's man. Stockton's like yeah, always boys. had a bit of a sly scene going on and they've always yeah yeah definitely that's another one i think with a lot of like rave music and bass music and influence yeah and stuff like yeah that. yeah um the which genre's probably right. has a good um a reason why the live live stuff works up there so well still i suppose yeah um we played out in uh burnley Sick. um where else have we played huddersfield harrogate <laughs> yeah um Shipley all around there so mainly around West Yorkshire to be honest with you but as I say Stockton I'm, I'm probably missing a few yeah 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 um, but n- it's funny isn't it leaving, the, leaving your own town it's always a bit of a like how's this going to go down like yeah. when you leave West Yorkshire I have no idea and sometimes it's been fucking amazing and sometimes it's like wow no fucker showed up yeah and like yeah. even though you've got people down there necessarily would be like oh y'all come through for a gig or whatever you're like it's just it is a funny one like and and promoters all base it off that so like obviously if you go go down to Bristol and you smash it and 200 people turn up then they, people are going to be like keeping an eye on that and going oh well we should book him in you know what I mean wherever but if it's like mm, a bit dead like or whatever and it's hard to even shift tickets in a different place it's like how do you how do you get the name out there like I, 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 was, th- I was thinking about this like all you need really is about 100 people in each sort of major city who would want to come through to your gig and you can really smash out some gigs 
But it's like getting your name to those people and getting them interested in it. It's such a long process because even if you say you started doing some adverts on Facebook or whatever and you got like one of your tracks listened to in these areas and then that's their entry level at Parisian Fandom, they aren't necessarily coming through to a gig and less and less people are going to gigs and it's like you've got to get them on board to like okay, now I'm interested, now I've got the album, I bought the album, and then I want to go to the gig. And it's like, that is such a long process to do that all around the UK without, you know, Sony BMG money. The way and people consume music as well these days doesn't even lend them, lend itself to that. Like no. Playlists, stuff like that, like even not playlists, just stumbling across people. Like, yeah, I might like that thing, like, like, like that song, like that video, whatever. I might hit subscribe, I might hit follow. That doesn't mean I'm going to even be updated with the next release that you do nah. that doesn't mean that i'm going to follow you on social media absolutely not that doesn't no. mean that i mean even if i do follow you on social media the algorithm might not show me your posts yeah, yeah so yeah. i might not even know you're playing in my city <laughs> like and you are but yeah. I, and you've put it out there it's yeah. on your spotify i've missed people i it's wanted not, to see because i've not been like but it's yeah. not told me yeah. and i'm not actively searching your name because i've got a life I'm and you not, can't <laughs> dm and the thing as an artist like it's so hard to like dm everyone who's following yeah, yeah, you yeah. anyway like the, the, the they won't read shut it. down for that no of course they won't Do you know like, what i mean yeah. every time i'm playing go away like it's tough, isn't it? It's tough, like, trying to get your music out there more. And I, and I think, well, it was interesting, again, scrolling down your fucking SoundCloud, which has really been the headline of this podcast, your shit was, like, getting 9,000 plays and yeah, shit done, back in 2014 and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's really running some really good numbers up there. You're just like, well, that's, you know, that's that's significant. Like, where America are a these lot of it. America a lot of it. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, especially in, on SoundCloud and even on Spotify now still. Uh, uh, I wouldn't even be, I don't even know really what it is like at the moment, but there have been times where you know you're looking at your analytics and stuff and it's like america is 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 um loving it yeah man which i wouldn't have predicted i think some of it do you like that new shit as well that they honor they honor that that's what i mean yeah, on, on so spotify on, on, the, on the new stuff, stuff like, like so which, which i wouldn't have i think some some of the songs i put out have maybe more of a trap kind of sound than i give them credit for so maybe there's a bit more of a of a um you can cross the cross cross over a bit. But more still, there's a lot of that out there. It's not like that market isn't saturated. So for that to have got exactly, through yeah. and, the, and to be listened to, like yeah, I think there's a bit of a what is it? Engl Anglophile or Anglophile, isn't it? A Germans a bit like that as well, where they're like they want to hear the British version of the hip hop. And yeah. I think that was, it was big in Germany to like English kind of grime trap stuff but I think it's gone out to America a lot and Australia as well yeah yeah well and America they're like there, there was obviously a time where we were all recording ourselves in American accents and now there's kids doing English accents like copying the yeah, London man. guys yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that which is it's funny for Sounded American like guys on, uh, who are doing it it's coming to London yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah. all from like Brooklyn and stuff what, yeah 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 definitely, definitely what a crazy yeah, thing sure. man but yeah, I, th I think yeah putting out putting out music is a, is a fucking hard game if you're not you've got to love it in it and understand that like no one's going to listen to it and even if it's it looks like on spotify you're getting thousands and thousands of listens fundamentally those people aren't necessarily engaging in the no, next exactly. bit of content you no. do and no. they aren't you can't grab hold of them can't like get them, can i want like? yeah that's it like for example jammer tony was like 20 listens a, a month for time suddenly we're on one playlist with one song thousand odd listeners i've no idea who the fuck they are i'd love to get hold of them and go we got more shit but that is up to spotify's like, to a list or anything, yeah yeah so, no like... absolutely not so you can't grab hold of them and spotify knows that and uses that in a really shitty way they lose power if they give you that information 100 percent. and it's like <laughs> every everyone squeezed to the last bit so it is it's tough as fuck to put music out i'm turning into a proper old man just moaning about how hard it is to put out music now but it fucking That's is it. man like well i don't yeah. think it's difficult to put music out i just think it's oh, difficult to make music con to connect That's that's people. what I meant, yeah, yeah. Any motherfucker, I mean, we could literally record this, loop it they up. put it on Disco Kid like, and it's out there, isn't it? Yeah, and everybody yeah. can sign up to an account and put something out, which, you know, pros and cons to that again. Yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. when it's just into this bottomless pit of music, how again, pros make, and cons to it. Like, how do we, how do we change that? Is it possible? It's, it's not possible, is it, really? Apart from just gigging like fuck. I think that's, yeah. Real lifing the yeah, fuck out of yeah, it yeah, is the yeah. only way, really. Which I think it? people are doing. Yeah. That's, I think there's been a big shift over the past couple of years in people talking about how merch is where the money is and stuff like that i, I hear uh, artists talk about it all the time merch is where um, the money is well that's you know, why you, you more than i because i always, every time i turn up to a gig i've got a fucking bag full of shit and you are another guy i'll turn, turn up, up to up your gig <laughs> 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 back really to my will. merch <clears throat> chuck some cds tapes down <clears throat> all the rest of it 
<laughs> but you've got them, man. I still fondly, fondly remember the story of um, Flame Griller supporting a Mouse Outfit at the Broodnell Social Club. Mouse Outfit brought no merch at all. So we went on stage, sold some merch, then Mouse Outfit went on stage, and then we sold merch after, yeah. and it was yeah. fucking beautiful. Yeah. So big the fuck up Mouse yeah. Outfit. <laughs> yeah. You smashed it for us that night. <laughs> if you don't bring your own merch, you sell Because that's it. If they'd have brought like 10, if they'd have brought 40 t shirts, they'd yeah, have sold yeah, yeah. every single fucking one, yeah. but they just didn't. And so like, people are thinking, well, I'll support the support act. In it, yeah, not? yeah, yeah. Why the fuck not, man? Like, yeah. So merch is the way. It, it has its own expense, but I think because people are like, I had, I, I had an argument basically on, with someone on WhatsApp who like, I like music, but me and me and my, my friends who consume music, we don't buy music. So like, I'm afraid it's just I'll just have to spread the word. And it's like, have you got a body you can put a fucking t-shirt on? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll just have this to spread the word, more. mate. I'm afraid. Yeah, I'll just spread the word. Yeah, yeah. So, well, and, I'm, and, I'm, and fundamentally, I did have to kind of caveat it and go, actually, bro, I just appreciate the fact you're listening yeah, to me. Yeah, so, like, yeah, And yeah. I do, I, anyone who's listening to my music, fucking sick, but like, honest to God, just fucking support the but artists. It's just, just like saying that. You just support the music and don't say that. It's fine. But yeah, yeah, you yeah. say, no, I've just got to spread the word. No, you don't. It's <laughs> not. There is a way that you can. Isn't so. it? It's possible. Here's the fucking link. What colour do you want to wear? <laughs> yeah, you've got 25 colours. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fucking people. Uh, people are le- investing less and less in musicians. But as a, mu- it sounds whack from, oh, buy my album, oh, buy my t-shirt, like, oh, and and like even me saying you should be buying Pretty Phantoms t-shirt or whatever, like it sounds whack. It, it's really up to the consumer to yeah, yeah, have more course. responsibility. And the, you know, you get your vinyl nerds and your CD nerds or whatever who are like, I'm going to get that on vinyl. But even then, there's a little bit of an in-joke. I get the piss taken out of me and my family. I've, they bought me some socks for Christmas saying I have that on vinyl. Yeah, and shit. yeah, yeah. You know, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And it's like, it's not about the fact that I'm like, oh, it has to be on vinyl, darling. It's like, I'm fucking supporting the artists because yeah. they're getting fuck all money for their plays. Like, otherwise, like, even at the big leagues, like, yeah. and good record labels are crumbling in front of our eyes Absolutely. with good artists on because they aren't getting supported. So, like, fucking hell. Yeah. I think that... And that will get worse the way they're tightening it, really it up on will, all, the, all the streaming and stuff. And I feel like we're just going to be left with about 40 artists that major are, labels, that are man. That's co- it, like. co-signed by the BBC or whatever yeah, yeah. and and like everyone's eating from those guys and no nothing else but how does a culture come through, you know, how does a punk movement come through or whatever but I, I actually, I shouldn't talk, outside of hip-hop I probably, I, I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I've definitely seen some people rise up out of nothing a bit more with that but maybe it's through gigging and there being a, I still think a circuit gigs for is, it. It's hard, like some of the people i know in in kind of rock bands and stuff like that i have heard similar stories but in aren't like to it, i think that i think as a potential solution not that i've got the technical knowledge how to how to do this but it almost to me needs to there needs to be like a platform specifically for created by you know st- independent underground music st- yeah. on streaming that yeah. you can you know that's not just a distro kid kind of like upload and get it on there and and also not just like and not a spotify that's o- that's only paying you kind of oh, you know, yeah. peanuts like i think there's got to be uh some kind of high, like meet in the middle here of of you know still easily able to release music as an independent artist but not being able to get ripped off but also keeping the quality control up which i think is hard but i think if you had a group of committed people yep yeah, and a good panel of people running a ship like that. I think it's possible. It's just who those people are. People are moan about the gatekeeping aspect of that. No yeah, doubt, for by sure. the end of it. And I, I, that's an interesting point. Actually, I was just briefly wanting to talk to you about that. That um, sort of aspect of how to put this best. The quality control that you were saying before, like, because there are people that notably you are just like, this is shit, bro. Yeah, yeah. But how do Most you? Of you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I think you and me outside of the outside of this podcast will happily just like go, well, that was shit, and yeah, this was yeah, shit, yeah, and yeah. they were shit, and all the rest of it, which is, I mean, harsh. And everyone who's making music, good on you. Yeah, for sure. But like, how do you do that without breaking people's hearts, and also being that gatekeeper who's just mm-hmm. like, no, you shan't pass. Your yeah, shit is yeah, not yeah, good yeah. enough. Like, it's not up to a standard. Like, that's a difficult thing, isn't it? You want it. You want to put stuff out. You want it. You want to have a group of people who are putting. You know, as you say, like the good independent music out that's like rubber stamped, but then some people are going to be like, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't be part of that kind of thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what I mean. I think it's whatever way you go, there'll be another group, you'll piss another group of people off, basically, 100%. with whatever decision you make with it. But I think that, I think if we get to a, a, a point in time where the only things that you can download, that you can stream on Spotify, Apple Music, and these are entitled and all the rest of it are things that have come through you know rock nation or whatever or you know warner brothers whatever the big labels are yeah like 
and any alternative is something at that point, I think. And I, I just can't help thinking, like, the pessimist in me thinks in two years it will be wiped, bro. It'll just be like Taylor Swift and that. And that's all you've got. Well, they're already to. scrunching down yeah, like less than a thousand players. They're not paying for it, so stuff. people will stop uploading to it. Yeah. You know, so. It's a lot of hard work, isn't it? It's a lot of hard work that, that required just to like keep yourself bubbling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, man. Yeah, and I mean, how else can you do it? Like, even though Spotify doesn't pay you a huge amount or any streaming doesn't pay you a huge amount, like, mm. that if you don't do it in this day and age, like, how is anyone going to find you? Yeah. I mean, got, yeah, there's YouTube, but it's the same, bro. Like, I got YouTube's a friend who fun. put his album out and he was like, I refuse to put it on Spotify. And for very valid reasons. Yeah, yeah. No one bought his fucking album. Exactly. No one gives a shit. And it's yeah. like, well, didn't see that one come in. Like, you know what I mean? It's uh, what what do you do though? You can't unless you unless you do have the the power of Taylor Swift to just go. Well, I'm taking all my music offline. But like, yeah, it's it, it's a, it's a funny one, isn't it? It's a funny one. Fuck it, depressing as shit. Yeah, um, man. So don't do stop. If you're thinking about writing some music, don't because <laughs> yeah, there's too many of you. Time. <laughs> and we'll tell you it's shit anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Precinct Phantom, it's been a joy to fucking moan like fuck about yeah, music with you, bro. Uh, you're Anytime. an absolute legend. Go listen to his fucking music and big the fuck up. Uh, respect, bro. Yeah, One four yeah, axiom, yeah. punctuation, so many wheels out now. Precinctphantom.bandcamp.com, support. Big up XP, big up the Dub Y Wednesday podcast. Take care. Dub Y cast. Dub Y cast. <laughs> big up, big up. <laughs> so that was Precinct Phantom on the Dub Y Wednesday podcast, uh, the, uh, the Dub Y cast. Um, big up for him coming through. It was a pleasure to talk to him, a pleasure to moan like fuck about music. Uh, if you listen to this and you're an aspiring rapper, maybe you consider fucking it off and just leaving it to the big... <laughs> now, do your thing, man. You'll probably smash it and get more plays than me. So, yeah, big up. Till next time, Dub Ycast. <laughs>